what are the teacher's beliefs like mm. hey when you meet the teacher on monday what's her gender belief right yeah yeah ask yeah. that simple question it will answer all of my well what questions. you're saying like you're, you're you're commenting on that's social commentary to some degree but it's not what you're really saying is is this a reasonable person let's go Welcome to Citizen. We have a very special show live from Las Vegas. Dr. Brian Goldstein, tell me about yourself. Which aspect of my life? Well, tell me where you're from. <laughs> uh, Los there. Angeles. Like originally from LA? What part? Like the heart of LA. Mm, word. Born and raised. How was that? Um, now, it's kind of sketchy. Well, now, yeah, but growing up, it was different. How old well, are you? I'm 36. 36. So post smog right post post smog smog's right. been pretty good for the most part um and there were the good years i think from like what would you say 90 98 to 2010 maybe 2012 even as late i'll as push as far as 2012 yeah but then it started to like, then it started rapidly. to like slide like my ex-wife was lapd mm -hmm. so i got to see a lot of stuff that most mm -hmm. people wouldn't see and Traffic's always going to be traffic. Yeah, I don't care. People that complain about traffic who haven't lived or worked in LA, I don't listen to anything they fucking say. Yeah, like, that's like, not traffic. It, it I just calculate it's going to take me an hour to get where I'm yeah, going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why nobody goes to watch Angels games because it's 20 miles away, but that's, it's fucking 45. For me, that's like two hours. Yeah, it's like 45 minutes at a minimum from the city to get there if you're Fair in minimum. the southern part, right? Yeah. It's and sucks. games are always at prime time, so you're screwed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah um, no, but, you know, we got good comedy, good entertainment. We had a lot of amazing restaurants, but now, like, with everything going on, they've slipped off. Yeah, what's going on with that? I mean, I know a lot of retail stores have left. Retail stores, restaurants. Seattle, Portland, L.A., a bunch of places. Chicago's another one. Dude, people are allowed to steal up to 1000 bucks in L.A. Yeah. County and walk out. Well, uh, that's a Canadian thing. We stole that from them, you know. They did that, like, 15 years ago. Theft right. under 1000 became a citation not even a misdemeanor oh no no la it's not even a citation it's yeah up. now it's like we i guess we did take it one step farther yeah uh, further rather and then getting a ccw mm. is easier now but the wait's like a year who is it is it still up to the sheriff there or how's it work uh depending on where you live it's either the sheriff or lapd mm. so if you're out of uh I forget the exact word. Like the city limits, probably. Yeah, right? at a city if limits. If you're in the county, nothing. Then I fall under LA County Sheriff. Mm. Um, so you've had a pretty interesting life, then, right? To say like the a, least. A lot of, a lot of uh, like early entrepreneur, and then some early uh, health problems, shit like that. I'll even take it farther back. I dealt with drug abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, mm. and grew up in that. And like from a parent, you mean? From a parent. Okay. Yeah. And to me, chaos is normal. Sure. And I think that's why I was able to succeed in business because nothing in business is not chaotic. Mm. And so for me, that's the norm. That's when I feel at peace. When yeah, everything's yeah. quiet, I'm like, what the fuck's about? Well, that? how do you deal with that now, though? I mean, that's a problem for a lot of us vets. We get so, um, and I've been talking to a lot of people about this lately, not just vets, actually, people who grew up in households like that have a real hard time having constructive conversations later on that aren't combative like they don't know how to communicate without it being aggressive sometimes so up until 2012 i'm sure similar to you anger mm. management issues i'd break shit i'd snap my phone in half yeah. and not kyle the the wall just punch a hole through the drywall you know yeah and then i nailed a couple studs over the years and broke my pinky knuckle and i'm like All right, do it, yeah. i'm over punching walls because yeah. <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna hit a stud this time but i discovered plant medicine in 2020 mm -hmm. during covid and that really put me on a completely different trajectory what so tell me like uh i, I like to i like to do thought experiments like this so it's tuesday random day before like let's say 2018 and you face some kind of irritating situation a hurdle rude people business is fucked up employees doing dumb shit and then after when you get your brain adjusted a little bit right tell me the difference between those two like how your reaction between those two scenarios instead of punching my computer screen or breaking my phone on my desk or just outright screaming and pounding my mm -hmm. fist now it's like i have as we're talking there's a pre-conversation split second time sure yeah and it's running the two scenarios and it's essentially saying hey stupid don't go for the normal option one go for your new option 
Yeah, that's a that's something that we try. We're and we're here a lot. Or we're here this week every year to talk about veteran suicide specifically. But that's one of the things um, that we harp on quite a bit is that little gap. You know, th- those that that five to ten minute window where things start to spiral and how to be resilient against that right and it is a big part of it is being able to have that internal conversation with yourself to think before you react 100 you know. percent. and look the system put me into psychiatry at a young age they oh yeah me, they put pills. me like my high school sent me to a certified and had me on lexapro and all that other stuff and one day i woke up and i was like i threw everything in the trash yeah i was like i don't yeah. need this shit yeah and then you know i still had anger management mm-hmm. and after I, don't know. I was probably in therapy as a kid for 10 years and didn't do anything. And I had done a bunch of fun, but dumb stuff. Mm. I tore my right shoulder, herniated my low back, my neck. And so I was always in a constant pain. So I became a fat fuck. Yeah. And I ended up doing stem cells in Columbia, getting out of pain. And then I was like, I can't be a fat fuck anymore. I ended mm. up doing the gastric sleeve, shaved off 110 pounds and then discovered Phyllis Ivan shortly after that, we were in between IVF cycles. Mm. We had failed round one and two. My wife and I were in a bad place mm. and a friend called me, he's like, Brian, I know you don't drink, you don't do drugs, but come to my house. I'm hosting my first shaman ceremony mm. and there'll be 22 people with you. I looked at my wife, I was like, hey, wanna go do Phyllis Ivan? She's like, mushrooms? I was like, yeah. She's like, it sounds better the way you said it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> she's like, how much is it? I was like, 600 bucks each. She's like, we're going to go pay $1,200 to do mushrooms. Mm-hmm. We can go buy it for 50 bucks and do it ourselves. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. nah, 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 nah. No. And <laughs> I made the executive decision. I was like, fuck it, we're going. Mm-hmm. And she's like, my sister's coming to town. I'm like, I don't care. She can stay at home, watch the dogs. Mm-hmm. Well, she'll be fine. Take off early in the morning, get there. And I remember them saying, you can't <laughs> eat. I was like, guys, my stomach's the size of a toddler now. I got to eat like every two hours. So I eat what I could before I get there. And then I always bring snacks everywhere now. And so I remember ceremony starts. You're laying on a yoga mat, put on a blindfold. And he's like, all right, just lay back, relax, say nothing. You can't touch your partner or any of that. And I'm like, oh, nothing's fucking happening. I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. 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 Five minutes in, I start seeing flashing lights in my eyes. I'm I'm like, game on. Um, the, how, what, what kind of dose did they give you, if you don't mind me asking? It was three and a half grams. Okay. That's not bad for your first time. Yeah. N- not too much, not too mm, little. I was yeah. happy with that. And like two hours in, they offered mm. you another gram if mm, you wanted it. Yeah. Uh, I declined. That's that's kind of how I do it, actually. I, I, I usually start with two or three and then pop in one or two more later if I feel like it, even if I'm just watching cartoons, by the way. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes Look, I took a fun. gram and went to Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, word. So uh, my buddy, my co-host on my other show, Drinker Bros, uh, did that. He and his wife took some and went to the Sphere not too long ago. Seemed like it was a pretty good idea, right? Until you I walk know. up to those talking robots and shit. I don't know if that's We great. went into Jabberwockies. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you may want to fuck um, that one. But it felt like I traveled 100 years backwards and 100 years forward. Mm. And every time they would change either the sound bass or the music, mm. you would go down a different journey sure, exploring yeah. different parts. And I came out of it and I was like, fuck, I got all the answers I needed. And yeah. a week later we did combo. That sucked so bad. What, explain what you're saying. Here. Uh, combo. combo, they burn you in multiple spots and mm. then they put frog poison on top. Like DMT. No. Um, like Ibogaine? Bufo. Uh, no, so this one just purges all the crap out of your Oh, body. okay, and that sucks, I guess. Oh, it's like food poison. Oh, the worst food poison that. you've ever had for like an hour. Oh, it's not, that's not bad. An hour. I finally bad. said, dude, it's coming off. Like yeah, either yeah. I'm going to rub my back against the wall to get it off or you're mm. taking it off. Oh, so it's, I've, so I'm, I'm not familiar with this. So it purges you for as long as you're in contact and then when you remove it, it's, it Correct. kind of tapers on. And like if you go to the Amazon and do it, they do 12 spots. Mm. We did it locally, it was four. Uh, my wife ended up passing a cyst <clears throat> during... And we got pregnant two days later. Wow, that's interesting. I never heard of that before. But you know, nature provides, right? It does. It, it, and it's, I th- it's weird that we tr- we keep trying to, um, like, what one of the one of the pieces of advice I give people about their health, like the the there's two very easy things you can do. One is don't eat anything that didn't exist 200 years ago. That's a pretty simple thing to do, right? Uh, and the second one is move around 10 to 15 minutes a day. That's really all you need. You don't need to. You don't to, need hours. You don't need ball busting, fucking soul crushing workouts every day to be to for to to have good vascular health, which is what you're really looking for. Uh, not no uh, 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 no fat on your organs, right? 
and good vascular health, and you're going to be pretty resilient against most diseases, right? Especially the ones that really kill, like heart disease. Oh, yeah. And look, I'll take it one level farther. I was in healthcare for 17 years. Mm -hmm. Um, You were in the military. You've been Mm -hmm. around a lot of fun chemicals. I now leave the country to go do heavy metal detoxes, chelation therapy. That's something we've got to bring to the U.S., I mean, we have to do something. And, like, why do I have to travel to Columbia to do stem yeah, cells? fucking crazy. Well, um, there, there's that clinic in Dallas is starting to do it a, a bit now, right? But it's still, like... It's not the same. It's, it's low level. Like, like these guys are, like, stuff. putting me out. Yeah. They're having the uh, <clears throat> x-ray there. They're going, like, exactly where I need. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, all my friends that are athletes, they get, like, MRIs and x-rays. They find... They pinpoint whatever the injury, MCL, ACL, whatever the fuck, and they put stem cells right into that And they, spot. like twilight you you're in a full-blown oh, yeah. or out there yeah, it's wild man and look the first 36 hours suck mm. but after that it's fucking amazing yeah it's I just got, sore i mean i've been it's sore as the, shoulder i would say the shoulders like truly do suck it feels like someone hit you with a baseball bat really? the, like you can't even without crying mm. well i like to cry so it's not uh-huh. a big deal. i was like eh. but you know between doing the stem cells doing the chelation therapy like as long as you stay on top of your health to a certain degree like for sure yeah makes a big difference well i mean an ounce of prevention right i mean we we, we have all these adages from the last three thousand years of western civilization and we're just like ah oh, fuck that and then all in the, every hundred years or so we rediscover the stoics and shit it's the most it's so maddening to me that we're like have you guys heard of this marcus Aurelius guy like yeah everybody on earth has heard of him dude what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about well the funny part is even take your animals into effect why are so many animals getting sick now because of the crap we're fucking feeding them. Yeah, I, I, there's there's been a lot of uh, commercials about that I've been seeing on social media lately. One of them is like every living creature dessert does shouldn't be eating processed food, right? Like my if dog you're eats your dog Purina and shit like that. My no dog offense, eats raw Purina, meat. but don't <laughs> eat that shit. There's, there's a couple of good prepared foods like Mike Ritland. I don't know if you know. Do you know Mike Ritland? I do. You should go on his show. He's a former Navy SEAL dog trainer. Okay. Like he, he raises high quality dogs, sells them for a lot of money, right? Um, there's some out there. There's some food out there that's all protein. That's what fat, I do. I do right? uh, Steve's real food. Yeah, comes yeah, frozen. Yeah. I got a Doberman. He eats six patties a day, and that dude, his teeth are white, yeah, like yeah. coat yeah. shiny. And it's yeah. the same with humans. And their joints too. I mean, it's like all that stuff. Inflammation kills every. Well, like we're all dying from inflammation one way or another. And I don't. Know, I don't understand why modern medicine isn't keyed in on that very much. Is there no money to be made? Because it seems no, like there would be. Look, I was a pharmacist for 17 years. Mm. I lit my license on fire recently mm. and told everybody to fly a kite. And I got tired of the FDA and the boards of pharmacy telling me what I could and couldn't do to help patients. Mm. Like You mean like prescribing off-label and shit like that? I was a compounder, so I was okay. able to make injectables, eye yeah. drop, you name it, I was allowed to peptides make Peptides and shit like that? Oh, and yeah. look, on, on my birthday, they banned peptides. <laughs> A majority of them. There's still a couple you might I mean, the only pharmaceutical that's even doing anything good for anybody, and you ban that one, right? Mm -hmm. And look, I'm sure we'll find a way to get it out of the country since I'm no longer licensed and I'm not held to the same standards. I'll go get my shit somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Mexico's not bad. Mexico's not bad. Like, I'm in the Middle East a lot. I'm sure I can get it over there. Actually, UAE is great for that, yeah. Uh, Actually, Bahrain, I believe, is another good spot. Yeah, I'll be in UAE in a week. Yeah, well, just uh, ask somebody. (laughs) I don't think you need a license for anything over there. No, you um, pretty much get anything no. just over the counter. <clears throat> yeah, so um, let's go back a little bit. Yep. You come from a problematic childhood. Mm-hmm. What's next after that? You go right into school after high school? So my dad had lupus. Mm. Uh, fuck. Lupus and myosin and gravis when I was in the eighth grade. So my dad couldn't even, like, close his hands mm. together. He was getting blood transfusions because his white blood cells weren't producing. Mm-hmm. Um my dad owned pharmacies with my mom and when they got they went through a nasty 15 year divorce my dad got two my mom got one my dad ended up going to the mayo clinic in rochester minnesota uh to help treat his disease and all Mm. that stuff he met a nail technician fell in love with her the day i graduated high school he packed up and moved out of beverly hills moved to rochester minnesota started a whole new life Mm. threw me the keys and said figure it out (laughs) Mm-hmm. I'm 17 fucking years old. Yeah. I got employees that are six. Wait, are you even allowed legally to do yes. that? To own a, a, a pharmacy can't. at 17? Because you can't own like a booze company at 17. No. Um, so I couldn't touch mm-hmm. drugs though. Mm-hmm. I could order them. Right. But I couldn't touch I, mean, I guess you could own a restaurant. You just couldn't have a liquor license. Or you could have a liquor license, but you couldn't so I had a DEA. serve alcohol. Yeah, I had basically. a DEA license. Yeah, I had a yeah, state yeah. license. Okay. Um, 
And I started going to school at the same time of running it. And from there, it was just trial and error. I mm. started off with four employees. I ended up with 346. What was the key for that, like the expansion? Because so, not, not every business is scalable, but commodities are always, right? Yeah, and I think it's no different than your podcast. It's connecting with the right people mm. and just really getting your name out there and just networking and going to events and doing things like this where a stranger walks in and you don't know what the fuck to expect, but right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have the open mind of, hey, this is going to turn into a great conversation. Sure, yeah. This is going to turn into other networking things. And that's how I've always looked at it, paying it forward. I do a lot of shit for free mm. that I might not cash in for five years. Sure, yeah. Or ever, maybe, right? Yeah. But sometimes I, I do the same. Like, I like to... Sometimes I just want something to exist, and I don't have time for that bullshit. So I'm like, I tell somebody in this industry, I'm like, you should make this thing and make it this way. That way two years from now I can go buy it and I don't have to fucking do any of the work. You know what exactly. I mean? Just put seeds out there. So your uh man, your hair must have been on fire. I mean, holy shit. How I'm, how the I'm how, three how hair the hell? transplants in already. Well yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do you how do you uh manage all of that? How did you manage? I guess because you're you're still tuned up. You're still pissed off all the time right back then. Oh because um, I know I was. Because I yeah. I had I have a similar background. No drugs in my family necessarily, but very abusive, right? So I'm pissed off all the time. So the way I did it was I didn't really talk to employees. I talked to a couple managers mm. and I hired the right people. And my whole thing is if I'm hiring you to do a job, I will pay you very well, mm. but I am not your babysitter. Yeah. fuck. You that. need teaching. Hey, I will have someone teach you. I am not your teacher. And I really kept hands off from like training people. I trained mm. managers and key pharmacists to make certain drugs because I was one who learned how to make them myself. Mm -hmm because pharmacy school does not teach you any of that. Right. Um, but from there, it was really, I was hands-on on the marketing side, but not the day-to-day -day side. Mm. I mean, most pharmacies aren't compounding pharmacies. They're No, and it's a dying breed now. Right? Yeah, yeah there, a bunch of them just shut down this year. Well, 2023, oddly uh, enough. Yeah. I, like, I don't know why. I don't know what the fuck. FDA and boards of pharmacy are stopped. Like, we, I think three years ago, they stopped us from making HCG. What? And look, I, I wait, HCG, all it does is make you produce more natural testosterone, right? It's like to balance you out a little bit. Correct. Why the fuck would you ban that? Because there's commercially available at fuck, like 20 X and they're like, it's a so people are just taking Inclomiafin now, right? Yeah. Instead. Or you could take uh Clomid. Clomid. Yeah. Either or. Um, mm -hmm. but then, you know, it like HCG works, right? It's the most effective. As a matter of fact, I thought they were, they were, um, Sublingual, if I'm not mistaken, right? So sublingual on HCG doesn't really work because it's temperature sensitive. Mm, and see, to make okay. it a sublingual, you got to cook it at 140 C, mm. and you've just killed the active ingredient. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. Because um, I I used it for a long time until it just disappeared. Now and that now, now you know it's why. In yeah, right or close. And or for me, I'm like, dude, I have a small brain tumor. My body doesn't mm. produce any hormones. So for sure. me, I'm taking test HCG, Clomid. Is it is it uh, around your pituitary? Sitting on top of it. Oh, that's not great. Yeah. So look, mm. I take four injections a day and a handful of vitamins and pills and I live a normal life. I look normal. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but it's like for people, so toxic exposure fucks up your, there, there's so many endocrine disruptors these days. Even um, in our childhoods. Yeah, for sure. Like we, we all brag about drinking out of the hose, you know what I mean? Outside, but maybe we shouldn't have. <laughs> you know? I think it's still better than the water today. Oh yeah. Well, certainly <laughs> the water coming through your tap today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's, there, there's certain groups of people that have, these these endocrine disruptors we run into on a daily basis, like heavy metals, um, uh, plastics, and then, you know, other toxic exposures like breathing in weird shit. Candles. Candles, Fragrances. Yeah. yeah. The outgas inside of your car on a hot day. Yeah, the, that, that Glade plug-in in your house that you think is... It or like that so nice. bougie three hundred dollar candle someone gifted yeah, you yeah, that yeah. you love. I'm yeah. like, it's all poison, right? So your body washes. <clears throat> and then there's uh, the there is the head injuries, right? That we so the veteran community, first responder community, especially gets hammered by this shit all the time at a much higher rate than the ordinary citizen. But even like the <clears throat> the military and even the VA have done nothing to educate people on the risk of any of this stuff. That it's like, hey, good luck. And frankly, if you went to the VA, before the last two or three years, if you'd gone to the VA and you're 28, you're getting out of the military after 10 years of service, right? <clears throat> and you say, hey, I don't feel great. Let's get my hormones checked. And you clock in at 450 test, they're like, oh, you're in the normal range, right? 
The normal Dude, range I, is three fifty or whatever to like. No, it goes as low as one fifty. And oh, I remember God. that's like an eighty five year old man. Funny story. Like so literally. when I found out the way I found out about the tumors, every day at three o'clock I'd crash out. Just didn't fail. And then I go to the doctor, he runs my blood work, he comes back, he's like, Brian, your test is one sixty. I was like, He's like, are you abusing steroids? I'm like, dude, I'm a fat fuck. I'm 220 pounds at the time. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's, he ends up sending me for an MRI. And I was like, how did these two go together? Mm. He's like, just trust me. And then I went down that rabbit hole of, hey, here it is. And then I went to certain endocrinologists. Mm. They're like, well, because you're fat, you have low testosterone. And I'm like, my diet hasn't changed. Mm. There's a pituitary adenoma. Explain. <clears throat> and... Being in healthcare, like I didn't appreciate getting ran in circles. Yeah, I mean, mine was, mine was one eighty, and I was twenty seven. You should have been like low side eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. So I went to the doctor. They just gave me some topical cream for a while, and like, so the absorption rate is twenty five percent on this, right? Is it, is no, it, it's higher, but yeah, back then. Back then, well, yeah, that was this was like twenty twelve, I think. Yeah, like so that. you're using Androgel or Androgel, one of the, I think it was. Yeah, it was rub like, it on it your was, inner thigh or your arms. Or, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it was. It sucked to be honest. But even that, like, I used that for about six months or so, um, and it brought me up to like the four hundreds. Still not enough. No, and I'm still feeling like shit. I'm like, all right, can we do something here? And they're like, well, we can't actually. We literally legally can't. So now I have to go uh, find somewhere to. And this is before. Now it's now it's relatively easy. Right? Now it's really easy. Like you can find Men's testosterone and peptides all over the country. Um, but back then it was like, man, I had to go to my buddies and buy I'd, underground, like whatever the fuck I could get my hands on. Like I, I had friends that were that were athletes, bodybuilders, not like professional, not not in in the four major sports or anything, but. Um, Luckily, I was I was able to get access to it, but most people in my situation would have just been fucked, right? Um, <clears throat> so I've kind of been on that train for a long time, because there's no reason that you should feel like shit all the time, right? I mean, th that it's it's weird how I want to hear your thoughts on this as a as a pharmacist, somebody that's been in the medical field for fucking twenty years. It's so weird to me how. If you felt a little bit, there, there's a good 20 year stretch there. If you felt a little bit of pain, remember that pain chart with the smiley faces on it? You, you feel a little bit of pain. Well, here's something that you will get addicted to for the rest of your life. But I feel like shit because my hormone levels are fucked up. And they're like, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. you know, there was so much willingness to get you addicted to shit. And I think maybe that's the answer, but I'd like to hear your fucking Well, so opinion. I remember a pain management doctor years ago. Um, and this is before fentanyl became a problem. And I'd be like, hey, doc, like, dude, you're prescribing 1,600 micrograms, 240 lollipops a month. Like, how? 240 a month? Yes. Oh, plus oxy, plus other God stuff. God damn. And I looked at him, I'm like, Jason, how am I justifying this to the DEA? Yeah. And he looks at me with a square face. He's like, Brian, I started Joe here. Mm. Unfortunately, the sky is the limit once they build tolerance yeah. and tolerance and tolerance. And I'm like, you're joking, right? That's what you want me to tell the DEA? Mm -hmm. And sure shit, over time I got phone calls from the DEA and I was like, here's the report from him saying that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, we agree. But then all this stuff starts happening with Purdue mm -hmm. and Oxy and all that stuff. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, we're limiting what you can buy. The wholesalers start cutting you off. And I'm like, well, look, technically it's not my problem. But for the guy that's hooked to it that you got hooked, what are you going to do? Yeah. And they didn't have an answer. So no. box on for a half a second and that kind of disappeared. Yeah. 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 They, that, that kind of went away. What happened with that? It showed up one day and it's just as addictive as everything else. Yeah. Um, that's so weird. I mean, a methadone was around for a good 20 years too. And it did the same thing more or less. Um, I remember when all those, like the early 2010s, all these pain, pain clinics, started popping up. I'm like, a pain clinic? What the fuck does that mean? Because it oh. sounds like a fucking trap house. And my problem, you know I mean? essentially, was my problem was I got really good at reading people because mm. they'd come in and they'd act a little shifty and then they were getting the same paper and going to the printers and having them print everything the same but changing the phone number. Mm. And so you'd call and verify. Be like, this doesn't feel right. Mm. I go on Google, check. I'm like, phone numbers. Hey, did you write a script for blah? No, that's a stolen prescription mm. pad. And that was like a big problem. And I'm like, well, and this is before like discrimination really became a thing recently. Mm. And I'm like, yo, I'm not filling it. 
Mm. And people will be like, you have to fill it. I'm like, no, per California law, mm. like I don't have to. And people are like, you're going to turn down money. I was like, I'm going to turn down money over a punishment from the DEA. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm like, not trying to get... you guys out of your fucking tree. Yeah. yeah so we, we fed people all these pills and look, I mean, so many of my buddies I've, I've had, um, we'll talk about this on Wednesday for sure about, uh, and during the, uh, during the panel on veteran suicide, but, um, the number that they tell people this 22 a day, the VA says 17, that's wrong. 22 a day, a new study came out uh, a couple of years ago that said 24, the real number is about 40 to 44 a day, right? Because we're counting suicide by cop now. We're counting people who uh, overdose on drugs and alcohol after being fucking uh, uh, hooked, to the sh hooked on the shit for years. Um, so we, we have a real number and it's a lot more like 40 and it's like, let's say five nine elevens per year basically right we spent eight trillion with a t dollars on the GUI, the global war on terror um and we're losing almost five times that many soldiers sailors airmen and marines every fucking year and we stuff. have no one doing a goddamn thing for them no so i mean it, well, like the way you recounted is exactly right we get these people hooked on the drug then we ripped the carpet out from under them and they, all they they went out to the street heroin and fentanyl right and now we had what eighty five thousand fucking fentanyl ods last year eighty five thousand people died look, from ods last year not to go too down the political rabbit hole but i feel like there's a blind eye being turned to stuff how the hell is there this much of it ending up here yeah well i mean there's uh you know two and a half million people a year crossing the border illegally and just staying. So I'm sure the drugs are getting through. The drugs will always get through. Let's be real about that. Yeah, though. it's never stopped. Right. Um, they put up these claims, oh, we caught this. Yeah, that's what you caught. What about what yeah, you let through? Yeah. Yeah, it's wild, man. I mean, from your perspective in the industry, what, what's, what's to be done about this? You know what I mean? My honest opinion that I'm no longer licensed is more plant medicine for people. Mm. Ayahuasca being a thing. Mm. But yeah, they're scared of that shit because you don't have to fucking do it every day. You no, know you I mean? do it once every six months. Yeah. If like you're, and look, some people sit for five, six days because they're dealing with shit. Sure, yeah. And if yeah. these, you know, all the vet, 44 people a day are taking their own lives. Yeah. If those 44 people every day sat for six days, mm. fuck, and that bought them six more months. Sure, yeah. And what's the cost? A couple hundred bucks? It's nothing, dude. I mean, even if they, even if they did the full-on trip to Peru, it's maybe let's say five grand a year per customer which is way less which than is what cheaper we than the va bills way way cheaper i mean that we're, you're talking about somewhere between 17 and eighty thousand a year for those va bills right Th that's what it costs the government and we could subsidize that to a fraction yes yeah but you know somebody's getting paid somewhere that's always the case yeah and like look even microdosing mushrooms not mm. even doing a full trip mm. is enough to cut the edge to bring someone back to okay yeah it's just like we would call it creating standoff, right? Like when I build a, when I build an observation point or a fortified position, I need standoff. I need to be able to see the enemy from as far away as possible. You need to do that in your own life too, right? It's that thing we, we, that you're hearing about more and more now, delayed gratification. We've lost that fucking connection between oh, effort and outcome now, right? Like we just want it. I want it now. I'm, I'm in pain. I need a pill now for that pain. Okay, well, maybe you go stretch a little bit right maybe you go fucking move around a little bit maybe change your diet because you're inflamed as fuck and that's making it worse maybe you won't even notice that pain tomorrow right but i need it today so and people i don't know social media has definitely made it worse <laughs> everybody thinks they're not doing good enough or mm -hmm. not trying hard enough and you got kids right i got a two-year-old okay so when when our parents when we were young and our parents, I like to ask people this who are in, who are in the same general age group as me and, and before then as well, I think one of the things about having kids was I want to give my kids a better life than I had, right? Mm -hmm. That's a reasonable thing to do. We, we've not defined what better means for our generation because I don't know that I can give my kids a better life than I have, frankly. I built a very good life for myself. It's dope as shit. I don't know how, like in the traditional sense, better like access to good food, access to education, to capital, whatever the fuck, right? Safety, just being safe in general. I'm, I'm, I'm in the top 1% of that. So we need to start reevaluating what we mean when we say give our kids a better life mm -hmm. because it's mostly going to be separation from all of this bullshit. I grew up a very plush life. Mm. Doesn't mean I had a great childhood. Fair enough, yes. Yeah, and 
with my daughter, like, I don't like to buy her whatever she wants, mm. but I will buy like, there's a jungle gym sitting in my living room because I want her to play mm. all the time rather than watch TV. And I want her eating good food and staying away from food coloring and all that other stuff. My parents let me eat whatever I want. Yeah, well. And I want her to be active. I want her to beat up my Doberman. Like I want her to not be afraid of certain things and just mm. be outside and you want to run outside naked and jump in the pool when it's 40 degrees outside. Go for it, kid. Yeah. I'll wait until your lips turn purple and then <laughs> we're yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> I think people forgot how to just let go and be in the moment. Everybody's so yeah. entrapped with They're like, chasing it, man. They're yeah. chasing the dragon. There's a reason they call it chasing and not catching the dragon, by the way. Because you you're never going to catch it. that bitch yeah. ever. Like the chase never ends. Why would you want to do that? No. And people. So I guess the answer to the question, money doesn't fix it. It's the quality time with your child. It's mm. the conversations. It's the sitting there and teaching them just little things. Yeah. And, you know, I think when you do it like so that. When you, when you behave that way with your kids, they do learn the difference between um, expectation and outcome, which is important, right? To have, having th this, we, we've grown to a point of comfort in, in Western society now where we expect a certain outcome, which is a weird thing to do, right? Like it's, I don't think the gold miners that went out to California back in the 1840s were like, Oh, I mean, they, they thought, hey, we're going to go out there and maybe strike it rich. But they were like, I'm entitled to strike it rich. And if I don't, some some racist is to blame for this or whatever the fuck they would have said. Right. Um, we're raising we have a generate a generation or two now of people that think that way to some degree. And it's because I don't, I don't know that <coughs> I, I want to say that you should withhold things from your children. That's not the point. But it is like there has to be some association between effort and outcome. Right. Correct. So, like, how, so how do you how do you fucking hammer that home? Like it's people tried like set up a little bank account for the kid or a checking account with a little debit card when they're a teenager. Like you work, do your chores, and I'll put some money in that account or whatever. But that's like way too late. You got to no, do it, you got to start it two to seven age period. Yeah, and I'm like at that critical mm. point right now, and everybody's like, "Hey, are you going to put your kid in preschool? This, this, and that." And I chose to not vaccinate. We chose mm. to do a home birth. And so in California, my kid's not allowed to go to regular school because she's not vaccinated. Well, she's not missing much. <laughs> she's not missing yeah. anything. <laughs> and Especially she gets California. sick way less than everybody else. Uh, but we're going to start a pod with like-minded mm. people. And, you know, I looked at the curriculum. I was talking about it with my wife yesterday and just what are the next steps and how is this pod going to go? What are the teacher's beliefs? Like, mm. hey, when you meet the teacher on Monday, what's her gender belief? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ask yeah. that simple question. It will answer all of my Well, what questions. you're saying, like you're, you're, you're commenting on that's social commentary to some degree, but it's not. What you're really saying is, is this a reasonable person? Correct. Right. Does this person recognize this basic fucking science for the last gajillion years? Or are they a crazy person? Not not just a crazy person, but somebody who's weak and susceptible to nonsense. Correct. And I don't want my daughter, like my daughter's very strong willed. And mm. I don't want her to lose that. And I know if I put her in the system, she'll lose it. They'll take it away. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the point of it, right? I was talking about that this morning. It's like the whole school system was set up in the early part of the 20th century to produce Worker, factory workers. Worker right? bees. It's like, what does it mean to be a good student? Quiet. Like you do what you're told and you fucking do your work and you get straight A's and you follow yeah. it to a team. And then you do work. Uh, this is what my buddy Gerard Michaels has been talking about this a lot lately. Homework is fucking bullshit. We're teaching kids that the nine to five that they give to the school is not enough. Right. That the nine to, to five, you get to the business. So now you got to work from home too. You know what I mean? And look, when school was created to now, nothing's changed. Yeah. It's still the <clears> same <throat> crap. And it's, funny now that i think outside of the box talking with guys like tim mm. and everybody else who he started his own school yeah, yeah. kids don't need to spend eight hours in a school no it's crazy i mean maybe they need maybe at because of the way society functions we need them to be active for eight hours a day like that, that I 100 but three or four hours of that could be fucking outside starting fires and building campfires building campsite I learning learning things or whatever the fuck. five hours of outdoor like yeah. practical shit and three hours yeah. of curriculum in a creative space, not sitting yeah, at a yeah, desk yeah, hearing. Sure, yeah. Well, it's funny you say five and three because that's how it worked out in the professional workspace during the lockdowns, right? We found that people were getting the same 
work efficiency out of three hours of work a day that they got out of eight in the office. Why is that? Right. Contact switching is a lot of reasons that that happened, but mostly it was because you never should have been there for eight hours in the fucking first place. You tell me like we, we build weak people when you, when you have uh, uniform standards are good. That's not what I mean. But when you have, when you, when you cater to the lowest common denominator, that's what you're going to fucking get Mm -hmm. out of the most amount of people that you're going to train people to do the least amount possible. Now, if you tell your employee or your child or whomever else, here's what I expect. I expect this much of it, and I expect it th- at this time, and this is the quality I expect it at. That's what they'll give you exactly. every time, right? And they'll do it in shorter and shorter time more efficiently because they want their own fucking time back. Yeah. So and, that, and this is true with politics as well. The more power you return back to the individual, the better everybody fucking does. That is a, that is a true statement for every civilization in all of human history but they're also breaking up households now they want both parents to work they want the kid in school so who's raising your kid the nanny the school tv you know and fucking youtube right google bro like i never it's really paid attention hell, to youtube and i'm watching kids youtube and i'm like holy then shit. all of a sudden it jumps to the next video and it's some weird ass bullshit you're like yep. what the fuck how is this possible? oh i've wanted to like throw the ipad in the yeah. pool and be like dude we're done it's it's weird. Like I some of my my friends were young kids who actually still and there aren't many of them, but the ones that actually still allow them to watch YouTube at all have uh, all like they they build playlists and you can only watch these. Right, that's it. And they lock out everything. Yep. else. yeah. That's the only way you can really do it, which is fucking sad, to be honest. But it does. It is kind of telling too, um, because there's only one reason that they would be coming after kids with programming like that. Right, because they feel like they've lost control. Yeah, I mean, or they they want more of it. Right, it's it's one. Of, it's always about that control, and that's uh, <laughs> somebody that wants control over your family other than you. If you're a fucking man, that's gotta that's gotta make you feel some kind of way, right? Oh, it's gonna make you definitely feel some kind of way. I don't know how I'm gonna handle that yet, but it's probably it's probably not gonna be great for the person who tries. Look, I think you being in Austin close to Tim's school kind of helps. That helps, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wish I had that down the street. Well, I mean, he I think he's franchising now, so maybe when you do your little pod, you pop Sorry. up an apogee. Well, he's trying to convince me to move by you guys. You probably should. California fucking sucks, dude. I, I got to settle a couple affairs, and sure, then yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Especially if, look, I'm on the road three weeks a Shit, month. Shit, you and Callan are two of the last dudes I know that even fucking live in California anymore. Dude, Callan, funny enough, Callan Studio is like four blocks mm. from mine, and we keep like missing each other on mm. setting something up. Well, he's, I, I, we've been trying to get him out there too. I think he's, I think we're going to break him at some point. We'll see. But it's like, uh, we're starting to redistribute ourselves around the country mm-hmm. again, which is um, good and bad, I guess. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens out there once everybody, once all the people that pay taxes are gone. Right, because they're like fucking forty billion in debt now. And they they they, they took a two billion dollar surplus and turned it into forty billion in debt in two and a half years. How's that? How's that work? I'm not. I'm we, not in California. I used to live in Oakland. I'm not there anymore. We had I don't know what's going 32 on? Thirty-two billion dollars in EDD fraud. <laughs> oh shit! Really? And what? Like in two years? Yeah. I guess over COVID that makes sense. COVID. <sighs> Man. There's most of your deficit right there. Well, maybe you should, you know, just check IDs. That seems normal, you know. When was the last time you walked into a store where they checked your ID with your credit card? Yeah, never, never. Yeah. With I Apple think, Pay uh, now, they don't even look. At the airport, I think it's the only place, actually. Airport and the gun store. M- maybe maybe the odd hotel here and there. Here in Vegas, they do because they're worried about fraud. Actually, but, every hotel makes me show ID yeah, when I check in. But, yeah, gun store, airport, hotel, that's it, yeah. Weird. We don't do it voting, obviously, because... You know, what's the worst that could happen? No, and like funny enough, like in the UAE, when you get a phone and you have your visa, they actually take that card and pop it in and it's got to mm. read the SIM chip and it, your fingerprint has to match what's on your visa in order to get a telephone number there. Mm. Interesting. That's, yeah, we're, we're, I don't know what we're doing here. Um, it seems like just, some of it is just generalized societal decay. You know, people get comfortable and they look for problems to solve that don't exist. I'm sure that's a big part of it. Um, but a lot of it feels quite a bit more nefarious. Um, you know, it sounded very conspiratorial back in the early 2000s when Alex Jones was going on and on about uh, the Bilderberg Group and Davos, like the World Economic Forum and shit. It was like, come on, man, relax. You know, it's just, I mean, fair enough. It's assholes doing asshole stuff, but it's, that's always happened. But it's taken a weird turn. Digital life has made it 
quite a bit easier for people to get to 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 wrap control around large groups of folks you know what i mean so it's and look and then the food yeah well that's been going on for almost what let's say 75 years since the 50s at least in america but now i feel like it's gotten bad yeah well it's (laughs) you know what's one of my favorite things about this discussion about food especially in america is like um the for the baby formula we produce is illegal everywhere but that here why that's that's not a good sign usually right well, and then then the the best baby formula in the world which i believe comes from the uk is banned here correct and it gets smuggled in and of course the yeah. funny part is why do we shame breastfeeding i don't know man and like yeah. my wife kudos to her she breastfed my kid mm-hmm. for like two years and four months um everybody would shame her why are you still doing that and I'm like, dude, everybody's like, oh, you don't want to do a home birth. It's going to be a shit show, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, the birth start to finish was three hours. Louis C.K. does a great, or not not Louis C.K., who is it? Jim Gaffigan. He's like, oh, I don't want to, you say, you're, I'm weird because I don't want to have my child be born at the place where all the sick people are. Maybe, maybe I'm not weird. Maybe you're weird, you know. Um, yeah, I don't get the... Uh, The stuff around, I mean, they just want to sell products, I would imagine, right? Like, I always wonder, the, these studies that come out that say this is, this is dangerous, that's dangerous, um, find out who funded it, probably, right? That's, that's a good place to start, because I'm deeply suspicious of, especially pharmaceutical companies, but uh, big ag is like that, too. Food, food's like that, too. I mean, I wish people would understand what's going on with our food right now, that 85 Ninety percent of our chicken comes from Brazil. We have no idea what the fuck's in it, and right? we bleach it. Bleach the fuck out of it. Bleaching our meat, then painting it back with fucking carbon monoxide to make it red again. What the fuck are we doing? Like, they, there's got, there's no way that that's necessary. No, and I spend a lot of time abroad, and I'm just every time I'm out, I'm like, dude, the food just tastes so much cleaner outside this country. Yeah, the only time I don't eat the food that I cook myself usually is when I'm on the road. To be honest. Like, I just don't even bother anymore because you can't, you never, you never know. Even nice restaurants, you're like, all right. That's no, that for me, suspicious. it's a ribeye or two a day now. Mm. Yeah, I rock I rock a, two ribeyes at night. Usually that's my general dinner. I'll, I'll switch it up sometime. But, um, you know, if you get good fat, it works. I don't. Th- this is another part of the diet thing that's weird to me. Like, we went full on low fat, high sugar. Explain to people why that's fucking stupid, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sugar turns to carbohydrates anyways. You don't want to fuel your body on that. And then you're adding the inflammation. And we can go really techy on it, but mm. that's the short version. It's yeah. like everybody looks at me funny, like because of the small stomach, I have to choose protein or carbs or sides, even water. And I cook a ribeye every day, mm. chop it up on my counter, and I'll eat six, eight ounces. Mm. Eight is pushing or probably six. And that's it. I'm mm. done. Everybody's like, you're not going to have a side. You're not going to have broccoli. I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't even put butter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your broccoli doesn't do any. You're not getting anything out of that. No. Your body can't break that shit down. Body like, can't break down most we're not, of it. We're not ruminant animals. We don't have four stomachs, right? So I'm not eating green shit. Sorry. I mean, I like it. I actually like the taste of it. I like all I of it. I like a salad here yeah, and there. Don't get yeah. me wrong. but It's fucking pointless, though, to, for the most part. Yeah, like I try and get my 80 grams a day of protein. Mm. And I got to figure out how to get it in with mm. a small stomach. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, don't drink your calories if you can help it. You know, that's that's a good rule of thumb. And if you're if you're yeah, especially if you're on a limited calorie diet, you got to get the right stuff in there. I mean, if you're eating if you're, if you're not eating fat, then you're not getting any nutrients at all. That's why everybody in the in the South after these low fat diets, they're obese and malnourished at the same time. Look, I went full keto before I did the stomach surgery, mm. and my cholesterol was the best it's ever been. Mm. Like all of my levels were amazing, and you know it's high fat protein well did, we, we found recently that um this, the so-called bad protein or bad uh cholesterol that's not even a thing that's that they just made that shit up entirely what the fuck like who's getting sued for this shit the Nobody. government the government literally commissioned studies and then put it out to people that a certain kind of cholesterol is bad for you like you'll die from it right mm-hmm. and it's a, that's not true it's demonstrably untrue they're still saying it so what the fuck? I mean, who's doing something about that? Big pharma and big ag. Mm. 
God damn it. Well, we bitched long enough. Let's talk about some good stuff before I lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> um, what else? What do you got going on now? Uh, writing a book. That <clears throat> should be done. I'd say middle of next month, mm. and then make you know have the edit team sure, tweak yeah. it and do all of that. What are you trying stuff. to publish? When? When? Yeah. Um, Q three. Mm, sweet. Uh, what's the book? My life story, going through all the fun and the hardship, and then just really giving people golden nuggets of I don't give a shit how you grew up. You can still be mm. successful. You can still have the life you want. Yeah. You got to shift your mindset and shift the people around you. And how do you do that? I mean, like from like what what was it that clicked for you? Because for me, it was just like cutting people out of my life, family, yeah, personal good. responsibility. Like I'm, I'm the author of this. Like I'm it, responsible. Be, for every, everybody talks about be the main character in your own fucking life. Okay, that's fine. Take some fucking responsibility though. But like I'm don't just walk around like you're entitled to everything. Big, big shot guy. Exactly. And I'm responsible for everything in my life, mm. good, bad, or ugly. Mm. Everything that I'm dealing with, whatever I did, I gathered that energy, and that's why it's in front of me at that yeah. time. And you gotta you know, that that permeates through pretty much everything you do too. Um, and how you yeah. do one thing is how you do everything. Well, that's Greg Hurwitz, right? How you do anything is how you do everything. He's uh, one of my favorite authors. Um, yeah, so are you still working in medicine at all? I consult here and there out of California. Mm. Um, for people that want to go back into mm. California, I'm like, you're out of your mind. But I'll give you the tips along the way. But now it's just helping companies with branding and focusing on some investments I have and just growing the podcast growing content and just getting my name more out there and really sharing all that business knowledge I have because mm. I got tons of it to help people. It's just, I've always just, I don't know, like one of our mutual friends likes to say I'm too humble sometimes mm. and I don't share certain information when I should be. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a problem for, for me too. I'm not a good self promoter. I don't know how to do that. Like I don't, that, it doesn't occur to me to do it. That's weird I mean? to people like us. Yeah. It doesn't occur to me. It's like, I'm just doing the fucking job, man. Um, but it is good to have your buddy walking around fucking filming shit. Like, you need somebody. You need an Instagram husband. You know what I mean? And Essentially, business. and it's like, look, when I'm in the moment doing something, I want to have this conversation with you and not worry about, hey, I need some B-roll clips. I need this. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jay knows, like, hey, record everything, mm. even if we throw away 90% of it. Yeah. And there's certain moments <clears throat> that you can't reproduce. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent true, and you can't do the work properly unless you're in the moment either. Like Correct. you got to be present. The only the only this is I really try to fucking hammer this home with people. The only time that exists is right now. Like that shit that happened before that doesn't exist anymore. That's something you can think about. I guess you can reference it in the same way that you look at a history book, but that shit's over, right? It's done and tomorrow it. is like, be ready for it, but don't sacrifice today because you don't even know if that shit's coming, right? Like well, you, I was you, not promised. No, you've got to do, you've got to do today, and I, like, for people that have fucked up lives, sometimes it gets tough. You know what I mean? And I think people that are in, um, people that are in that cycle of suicidal ideation specifically, have a real problem looking towards the future. You know what I mean? They look to the future and don't see anything. You know what I mean? Like you and I, you look to see your fucking. Uh, maybe another kid, maybe your kids graduating, get married, whatever the fuck. Or, you know, yeah, stuff I'm planning 10, 20 years out. Right, yeah. But you're just like, you plan, you make your plan for 20 years out and then work backwards and it starts at day one, right? Correct. So you're back with like your action is all. And I think that's what so. a lot of people, they're like, oh, I want this. What's your timeline on it and mm. how are you going to work into it? I try to tell, yeah, that's one of the pieces of advice I give people who are struggling like that is like, you got to create some manageable goals. Get some wins, like create manageable goals. I this is where I want to be. Forget about like where I want to be five or ten years from now. Here's where I want to be. Then you can break up the time increments. What's well, going to take this line to do this? Probably, right? Maybe you're ahead or behind schedule at some point, but it's ultimately about getting where you want to be. I think. I think the most simplest version is we use GPS to figure out time to get somewhere. Right. Why aren't you doing that with your real life? <clears throat> What's your GPS to get to that goal? Hmm. That's a good way to put it. But we, we have a hard time with that. We, I, I don't know why. Just being distracted, maybe, you know? Way too many distractions. Chasing dopamine all the time. Dopamine, short burn. Look, we're in Vegas. Ton of dopamine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of flashing lights downstairs. Um, you got food, shows, mm -hmm. gambling. You name it. Yeah. 
well, how, what, what are you going to do with your kid to keep her focused in the modern world, man? I mean, it's like we were latchkey kids, right? Yep. Left home with the TV. Luckily, for the most part of it, there were only three channels, so it could only get so bad, right? But then, Dude, I was outdoors most of the time. Like, yeah, same. Hurt because myself. it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> like fucking daytime, I didn't want, daytime I didn't broadcast be, TV was like Maury Povich. I'm like, I don't want to watch this I didn't want to be home. Yeah. Because of the abuse and everything. I'm like, fuck oh, this. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. And that's the main reason I want out of California. I want my kid to be able to just play outside. Mm. And have fun and do her thing and play in dirt and not give a shit and not have to worry about what she's doing. Yeah. And how do you, like, how do you, once wh- wh- she does go, I guess you got to be car- careful about going to school now. One of the problems I've heard from friends of mine who have children, like, I can keep my kid away from screens to a certain point, but then they go to school and all their friends are watching that stuff. So that's why I like the pod, because then it's yeah. four students mm-hmm. and it can be. You know, I can sit in, her mom can sit in, mm. and we can monitor it whenever we want at sure, any yeah. time. Yeah. And then, you know. And control food. Th- there's also something about th- that keeping up with the Joneses bullshit starts super early. Like, we think that's something that happens later on in no, life. No, it starts out yeah. the gate. And, and it's weird, like, the in-out groups that get created. But that's how nature works, man. Like, fucking, if there's a bunch of tigers in the room and a bigger tiger comes in, there's going to be a confrontation. And then it'll get settled, and that'll be the end of it, right? Yep. Until later, but we don't do that anymore. We this this risk averse nature we have not not letting kids go outside, not let them letting them interact and take manage risk with other kids. Um, we've created a real generation of pussies, and it's and it, and it manifests itself in some in some really bad ways. So, I think there is a suicide epidemic outside of the military now. Huge kids and, are and getting it's, bullied. It's it's touching people that it never has before i know that um there was that netflix series about that girl that killed herself or whatever a while back a couple years ago right that was super popular Mm -hmm. but females teenagers do not kill themselves very frequently it's very rare it's the rarest of all the groups i believe um but it is the fastest growing subset of suicide now well yeah and look we have only fans now and kids parents are on there and then kids are getting bullied for it yeah that's probably not great that's probably and a good. couple of kids. I read the articles. They off themselves because they got bullied. Their mom was on. Yeah, them. yeah. I mean, it matters what you do, I suppose. Um, and then, I think a big part of it is they don't know how. Like, if you can't face, if you can't deal with confrontation interpersonally between other people, then that's going to you're you're going to mirror that in your own life. You're not going to be able to confront the hardship of just day to day life anymore, right? Mm-hmm. It's like we're removing all the calluses from the human I guess soul. I'll make it as simple as possible people forgot how to have a conversation without technology and make some eye contact and shake somebody's fucking hand or punch them in the face or whatever right i mean look when we were kids you had beef with somebody mm. you squared off yeah in the military you had beef with one of your teammates squared off yeah settled and it, it and it was never that big of a deal as a matter of fact i was uh, this is one i was uh, talking about earlier too with uh with my co-host kid um on Drinking Bros, Ross's oldest son was in, he's in jujitsu, right? Been in for a couple of years now. I remember we were at this Mexican restaurant. They have a playground out back, and there's this like little fat kid bullying everybody. Bigger, he's a little bit older than everybody else, right? <clears throat> so, just being a dick to everybody, and finally Ross's kid looks over at Ross. He's like, "What the fuck?" And Ross is like, "Go ahead." So he fucking guillotined his ass, choked him out, <laughs> you know. Um, and the kid's dad comes over. To, to the situation and Ross walks over he's like you saw your kid being a dick right he's like yeah it is what it is and then you know there was a little bit of uh, a cooling off period and they all in- they all including the bully kid just went back to playing like normal right it got resolved at the lowest possible level which is where it's meant to be fucking resolved that's how I squared off a lot of stuff like dude win lose or draw mm. that's it it's done so why don't we do that in our personal life too, right? So it's like it's it isn't we we see these things as separate, but no, we, it's all the same. We, we don't we don't face confrontation interpersonally, and then we don't face confrontation internally either. It's the same thing that's happening. No, and like, look, you see something bad happening to someone in the public, everybody mm. just pulls out their phone. Yeah, well, I mean, shit, that bystander effect is long is older than than cell phones, frankly, right? Like that Kitty uh, Genovese story from the fifties in New York, where. A bunch of people surround her, or a dude stabs her, and a bunch of people surround her, just watch her get stabbed to death in front of a fucking store or some shit. And uh, psychologists did a study on it afterwards, named it the bystander effect. Like, the more people who are present, the less likely somebody is to intervene in that situation. 
That's very it's a bizarre. Very interesting yeah. study. Until someone does, right? That when, once somebody takes action and becomes the leader of that situation, everybody piles on and stops the shit from going on. But it takes one. And I think it was Andrew Jackson who said, one man with courage makes a majority. And that's what he meant, I think, by that statement. And it's why what people like you do take all the fucked up shit that happened to you, right? And then also the successes and put it out there so people can see it, right? It takes, uh, I don't know if courage is the right word, but it definitely takes some gumption to put your life on fucking display. Oh, yeah. And I don't know. I was always taught to not show emotion because it'd be mm. used against me. And it's yeah. a very weird thing to have conversations like this and discuss these topics because fuck. You get it. You lived it. Most of our mm. lives, we buried. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was no one to share it with, really. Mm-hmm. No one that wouldn't try to use it against you at some point. Or at least and, that's how it felt, right? And most people... Look, I've tried explaining it to my wife, and she doesn't get it. Like, it's just hard to fathom your own parents would do that if you've mm. never lived it. Yeah. Yeah, and then who do you talk to? I mean, I, I, I don't know. It was... For me, I had, I had a brother and a sister, too, but we never talked about that shit. I it, never it talked was just, about it with my sister. It was just something that was happening. You know what I mean? But we didn't... Kids, you're just trying to get through the day, I think, to be honest. Um, yeah, it was weird. And then, you know, even as a young adult, I'm in my 20s now, um, and into the military, it's like, there's no room for that shit anymore, right? So if you don't learn it in those early years, this is a big problem with us. If you don't learn how to communicate properly in those early years, and it only takes, it takes a little bit of guidance, but mostly observation. I mean, 95% of communication is nonverbal. It's all mm-hmm. body language and shit like that. Um, it only takes a little bit when you're young, just like learning a language, right? It's way easier when you're fucking three to five years old than it is <laughs> when you're fucking 35 years old. Dude, shit. I've tried learning Spanish a couple of times. It'll like, never happen, dude. Fuck. It'll never fucking happen. <laughs> it's so much harder to learn as an adult. Like, I don't know. This is another thing that pisses me off about. This is random non sequitur but why the fuck are we teaching foreign languages in high school that doesn't make any goddamn sense yeah it should be the one of the first things and then do something else use that time for something else but every high school in america has a two like four semester requirement to graduate high school of some foreign language in high school like that's stupid i don't remember a goddamn thing i learned in high school but definitely (laughs) not the languages what the fuck look there's a lot of stuff we learned in school and i'm just like yeah 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 that that got deleted <laughs> immediately as soon as i left um so before we get out of here tell me about the the podcast so it's called truth hurt show uh i'm sure you saw sandlot growing up oh yeah uh squints is my co-host oh shit okay um you know that is was he just, still with uh wendy no <laughs> he's with jennifer <laughs> okay, uh okay. happily married <laughs> um he's got five kids four and one on the way Oh, word. Well, I mean, that's what he did in the movie, too. Yeah. Technically. So I guess he, that, part, that part's that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um And we just bring on interesting people to talk mm. about. We've had a bunch of relationship people on recently. We've had health gurus, just all these different things that interest both of us. And mm. it's anyone who wants to come on, we bring on. They're mm. like, why would you invite somebody that only has 2,000 followers? Right. That was actually our best episode. Really? Well, who was that? Um, this guy I met coming out of, coming back from Dallas. Uh, his name's Brian as well, and he owns a pest control company. Mm. It's called That Guy. Okay. And we were just shooting the shit, making fun of somebody, uh, stinky feet. Mm. Literally, as we're walking off the plane, mentioned each other's Instagrams to each other, and then he hit me up like a week later, and we just became friendly over mm. the time. And I was like, yo, Brian, you want to come on my podcast and just talk about your family fucking you over? Mm. Um, his family took a $5 million business from him and forged documents. And he just said, I'm not going to fight you. I'm out. Mm. And he's used that energy to build an empire. And that video got 15 million views. I'll do it. I was like, and Brian's getting like DMS now of people wanting him to speak at schools mm. and all this other stuff. And he's like, I didn't think anybody wanted to hear my story. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. it's, the little things that interest me, I'm like, well, fuck, if that interests me. I've lived a very interesting mm-hmm. life, and I still want to learn about that. Um, what's what's your is that just your goal for the show is to get interesting information out to people? Yeah, share yeah. information that we didn't have as children. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was limited for sure. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Who what uh, who have you had on recently? That's good. Uh, would we have, uh, we had the dad edge on, on, oh yeah, Larry, yeah, he's a great guy. Larry Hagner's one of my favorite 
if you're, uh, you you we found him on the show before he's but one of my favorite uh not just podcasters but um i use his stuff all the time i had a 35 minute call with him this mm -hmm. morning on the way here and he was just coaching me through some stuff yeah and he's great i mean just the way the the way he the the intentionality he brings to your personal relationship specifically between you and your wife and your children is, is huge is some of the best shit i've ever heard in my life to be honest oh yeah and look he flew out with his kid on monday mm. uh <clears throat> His the oldest, family. the oldest boy. Uh, no, one down, Mason. Mm, okay, yeah. And I guess Mason's a big fan of squints, and yeah, he's a big fan of mine. He like he he wouldn't get off the show one day because he liked the hat I was wearing or something. That kid's got some personality. Oh yeah, and yeah. you know, squints signed some baseballs for everybody back That's home, awesome. and uh, it was a great experience. And Larry was just super nice, dude. Yeah, yeah, he's great, man. Like really, seriously, one of my favorite people out there. Uh, well, that's good having people like that on amplifying them a little bit. Um, we got to get out of here, but tell. First, if there's any any message you want to share with these guys, um, give me that, and then tell everybody where they can find you and check out your your personal leave, shit and your and your social media or uh, yeah all that stuff. I'll leave everyone with this: who you spend the five people you spend the most amount of time with is who you become. Mm. Do what you want with that information. Um, Rise and fall to the level of the company you keep, right? Exactly. And uh, I can be found on all socials: Brian Gold, PhD. Um, pretty easy man to find and yeah appreciate you having me on. yeah bud. thanks for coming me i really appreciate it uh looking forward to doing this panel on wednesday it should be a fun time i'm a little nervous i i don't feel nervous so i don't know, know. how many people you think will be there um i th probably 150 okay i thought it was gonna there. be like closer to like 1k and i was like it oh. could be actually you know what i don't fucking know last year it was like 200 150 200 but who i'm knows? just gonna say there's gonna be 20 yeah, and yeah. I'll be well here. just i think you're supposed to picture them all in their underwear or something that's what they used to tell us as kids i don't know i'll just be like fuck. i locked with you and be like i'm not gonna look yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh i'm just gonna make fun of callan all night that's my whole thing so or tim just talk shit kind of beat us up uh yeah for sure yeah he could yeah it's true well fuck it i guess i'll just get beat up on camera yeah won't be the first time uh thanks for coming man i appreciate it appreciate you bud. thank you all for listening this has been citizen